In this video, we're going to take a look at two types of transformations. So to start things off, we need to know what is a transformation. The basic idea is you're going to take a point or a set of points and you're going to move it or them to a new position. And that's basically it. So if I have this point A and I want to move it over here, that would be some kind of transformation. So that original point I call the pre-image before I perform the transformation. And then once I'm done, wherever I end up, I call that thing the image. So notice we'll, uh, we will usually put a little tick mark next to our original point because we could have multiple points like A, B, C, D, et cetera. And when we move all of them, we want to know where each of them moved to. So I'm often going to re um, refer to this as A prime. So point A, the pre-image, and then point A prime is the image. Nothing really special about that terminology. It's just what you'll hear me refer to it as. The question then is, well, how should I move from A to A prime? Could I move it around maybe rotationally? Could I just move up, down, left, right? And so that brings us to the types of transformations. The first type of transformation is a reflection. So you can think of, of this as like a flip. The best way to describe a reflection would be to flip a point or a set of points over a line typically. So it's going to take a point or set of points and move all to the uh, opposite side of a line or a point in the same amount. So for example here, uh, if I take uh, triangle ABC and that blue dotted line, if I flip that over that blue dotted line, the same distance. So let's say I measure from point A to that blue dotted line. Let's say that that's three feet. Now, if I went three feet to the opposite side of that blue dotted line, that's where A prime would be. And then the same would go for B and C. If I measure the distances from each point to that blue dotted line, they should be the exact same distance on opposite sides. So we're going to have uh, four basic reflection rules in the XY plane. We're typically going to reflect over these four lines or points. So if I want to flip over my X axis, if I want to do an X axis reflection, that's going to keep my X value the same, but the exact opposite Y value. And you probably saw some of this in algebra one. You will definitely see this in algebra two. If I wanted to flip over the Y axis, then my X, uh, value would be the exact opposite, but the y value would stay the same. Another reflection, if I draw that line y equals x, we should all be familiar with that line. It has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. If I flip over that line, all that happens is I switch the order x and y. And then the last one is origin reflection. That's actually a combination of x and y-axis reflection. You're going to make both signs the opposite. So always start with a given point and then just perform the indicated operation there. So that kind of sums up the four reflections that we're going to see. Another kind of transformation is called a translation. Some people think of this as like a slide because you're sliding an object left, right, up, down. So it's going to take a point or set of points and move them horizontally or vertically. So you can see this kind of looks like a rectangle, A, B, C, D looks like it moved to the right a certain amount and then down a certain amount. So we can see how far A is to A prime, B is to B prime, etc. So your translations are always going to look like this. Every point, x comma y, travels to some point x, give or take some value, and y, give or take some value. Whatever those numbers are, that will tell us how much and in which direction to move. So for example, if they're telling me x, y travels to x minus 6, comma, y plus 2, that would tell me that all of the points that I'm going to move are going to go left 6 units and up 2 because I'm taking away 6 from the x, so that moves left, and adding 2, so that moves up. If I had x, y goes to x plus 3 and y minus 5, this would move to the right 3 units and down 5. And then lastly, let's say I have x goes to x and then y goes to y minus 8. I'm not going to be moving left or right at all because I'm not taking away or adding anything to x, but I would be moving down 8 units in the y direction. That should give you plenty of information to get started on those questions over 9.1 and 9.2.